Hello everybody, welcome to a Facebook Live with Jeannie. I am Jeannie Nielsen, the card lady, and I'm very excited to be here with you today. Today, I was going to do the Queen Bee, and to be perfectly honest with you, I just could not get inspired with Queen Bee. I have to work on it, um, especially not with three or four hours in the afternoon, and then I was on a Zoom for the last three hours, so I came up with a different class. This will be this week's in-person class in my studio here in Linfield, Massachusetts. Um, if you do not live in the area, there's a way to get it. Um, you need the stamp set, but everything else is done for you. All the die cutting is done because there is no uh, a associated bundle, um, either punches or dies. So I can't wait to show you this cute, cute set. Um, did I bring it with me? Not sure where I put it. Um, the name, hang on one second. Hang on, let's start this over. Okay, it's gotta be here someplace. We're gonna come up with it. But anyway, Count On Me is a great, uh, great stamp set. And it's got different things for um, th thinking of you, I'm here for you, love you, whatever. Um, wait till you see these cards. And I thought this is perfect for somebody um, when if you're not into Valentine's Day, because not everybody is. So let's show you the cards and get to work. Love these cards. I hope you will too. I did a lot of the pre-work for you, but I am going to give you some tips along the way. So I am going to, hi Karen, good to see you. Okay, we are going to try to flip because sometimes that works for me. Last week, it turns out that I flipped and flipped and I was upside down. I apologize. This week, I'm going to pay better attention. We're going to go down right now. Okay, so here we are at my desk in my studio. Um, here is the current host code, the February host code. Use that in my store, stampingwithgenie.stampinup.net. $35 order and you get this card class free in the mail. $50 and you'll get um, some embellishments with it. And then you also can choose a free celebration item for a couple more weeks. Okay, so let's get to this card. Isn't this just adorable? I'm gonna go down a little bit lower so you can see it close up. Um, these are the koala bears. Now, I am not sure that I, I uh, colored them right, but this is how I chose to color them. And we're going to make this card in just a second. Um, I have, let's see, this is the next card. It's an easel card. And I will go into all the details on this card. So adorable. A little bit of paper piecing, a little bit of a fancy fold. Um, not sure if I put the, fold, the fancy fold paper in there or not, but love this card. Isn't this so pretty? I have not used this ribbon yet. So I saw another card with a similar sketch and I decided, okay, I'm going to change it up no matter what, I'm here for you. And isn't that an adorable, um, I guess it's a kangaroo. There's probably another name for it someplace else. But anyway, this is my card. And for the most part, we're using Happy Family if I could. Actually, only these two cards use ha Happy Family. Then I've got this one. Oh no, this one does too. I forgot about this because you've got the inside too. So three of them use the Happy Family designer paper. And this is the last one. And I was in a hurry because all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going live in 15 minutes and I haven't finished putting this together. And I kind of got a little sloppy with the glue. So we're gonna do a better job when we do it together. Through thick and thin, count me in. Isn't that so cute? And I was going to double check and you know what? Let's finish this right now so it doesn't look ridiculous, even though we'll do it. I'm pretty sure I wanted these flippers to be black. There we go. Okay, that looks a little bit less crazy, even though this one is having a bad hair day. I have a little up thing right there. Okay, so let's get to work on this class and see if someplace around here, I put the stamp set that I totally meant to put to show you. You know, no matter what, it's always a struggle on camera. You know, everything can be smooth as glass for the entire day, and then I get on camera, and things fall apart in the biggest way. But anyway, let's get to this class. 
So I've already done the prepping and I have a ruler close by so that I can tell you some measurements. Um, well, took the ruler with me too. I bet I took them both upstairs when I went to comb my hair because I needed to brush my teeth real quick to be live for you. So anyway, we're going to do, we're going to wing it and I will, obviously if you buy the class, you get the tutorial, but we'll wing it. And I think I, for the most part, know what the measurements are. So this is Mossy Meadow designer paper, part of the neutrals family. I cut it at five and a half by eight and a half and scored it at four and a quarter. Really what I do when I'm making my cards for class, I score one time right at four and a quarter on a whole sheet of paper and then cut it in half. And if I'm able to save the card for another class or for this class, um, then I do. So that's what I did. This is gray granite cardstock. Um, this cardstock I embossed with the leaf fall embossing folder. Now I know what you are thinking because I thought that I was thinking, you know, this designer paper has leaves all over it. It would be perfect to use this embossing folder with it. Well, that was in last year's catalog, right? Well, I put it into my Stampin' Up! store and I can order it, which means it's current, which means you can still get it if for some reason you missed it um, in the catalog last year. So I embossed it and I'm gonna show you what I did. I've already embossed it, but this is the folder. I think you can kind of see the pattern. It's about um, a little bit over half of it is patterned. And then what I did was I put my four by five and a quarter inch piece of gray granite cardstock in here. And there are times when it is perfect and really helpful to line up with this line. There's a line on there. If you line it up, it will keep the pattern straight. I decided though, I wanted to have mostly pattern. And if I lined it up with that, I would lose at least a good, uh, probably three eighths of an inch of pattern. So what I did was I ended up lining it up with the edge. So this is what I'm gonna tell you. When you are using your embossing folders, this is how you do it. You put it in here. I'm gonna show you the sandwich even though by the magic of television, it's gonna be done. This is a thick folder, extra thick, so I don't need uh, the shim platform on it at all. I will put it on here and I'll put it in the center. The um, crease, the fold goes in first. If you do it the other way, you're gonna end up with really wrinkled embossing folders. So the fold goes in first, then you sandwich it. This is the blue um, plate, but the gray one is the same. I just happened to use the blue one just because that's the one I picked up. But they're both the same plate, the same thickness, and then you put it in. The next thing I want you to do though, is make sure that your entire sandwich with the embossing folder is inside and covered in this plate. If you don't, you'll end up with once again, those, those folders, or maybe um, the front bends up and the back bends down. And that's because, first of all, you probably didn't necessarily put the fold in first. This edge, you want that inside first, and then it might not have been completely covered um, in on the paper with your two plates. So if you do that and follow those directions, you're going to have a folder that's going to last a very long time. If you don't, I can guarantee you uh, that your folder could definitely crack, especially if you put the open end, end in first. Um, most of the time, it'll be fine, but there can be the time when it's off a little bit and then it's going to crack the folder up here and you've got a useless folder. Uh, or at least one that looks useless. You could probably get it to work. But anyway, so that's my tip on the embossing folders. So I've already done the work here. Just lost my designer paper. Um, I'm going to use some glue here and attach it. You don't need much. You can see my glue. I just keep a thin line going and move it pretty fast and make sure I've got all four corners in there and I'm usually pretty good. Um, and then with glue, you've got a second to move it. Not much more than that. After that, it's pretty set and then you're never going to move it. 
that's what you're going to find out. So, and it turns out, hmm, did I want it this way? I guess so. This, this would be the top of my folder. So now what I'm going to do, I have a three by four inch piece of designer paper here, which means my cardstock mat, which is again, Mossy Meadow, um, is going to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. It's a quarter inch on the um, height and width, and then that makes it an eighth of an inch on each side. So let me attach that here. Just like that. And then what I need to do is decide what is top and bottom. Um, there, I don't think it matters a whole bunch, except that I do see my acorn and I want that to be right side up. So I'll probably attach it that way. Before I attach it though, let me get this. This is the twill um, twine combo and I'm going to tie this around in a knot. This is a little bit slippery. This is the Mossy Meadow ribbon. It's a, or twine, or I think it's twill, I think it's called. And it's a little bit slippery. What I'm going to do, and I couldn't, oh, found it. I was going to say, I'm going to, I couldn't find my Stampin' Up! one, but this is in your Embossing Editions toolkit. Um, this is the reverse tweezers. And what I'm going to do is put that right in here. And then I can just tie my knot and have a whole free hand and it's not going to slip out of, out on me. Now you do end up with a little bit of waste when you do that, but it's not terrible. And I'm going to tw trim my tails. This, the paper snips are my paper scissors. They're not my ribbon scissors. So it might be a little bit awkward. Okay, so now I ended up, here we go. I ended up already die cutting one of the stylish shapes circles. This is the uh, the third largest, I believe. I'm pretty sure, no, it's the second largest. This is the second largest of the circle stylish shapes dies. And what I'm going to do is stamp in memento my koala bears. Now notice when I'm stamping, I'm tapping. I'm not smushing it in. If you smush it in, you're asking for a halo. Um, what I'm going to do is stamp it close to the top. I could stamp it to the bottom either, but I'm going to stamp it in the middle. One, two, three. And there's my image stamped nicely. Now I have my sentiment and this one says, reading it from the back, I've got your back. Now, isn't that so cute? The one koala is holding on to the other one and says, I've got your back. I'm here for you. I'm going to take care of you no matter what. Um, but now what I need to do is make sure that I'm going to stamp this right side up. So what I'm going to do is, yep, that's that. And I'm going to stand up so I can see what I'm doing. I'm trusting the block because I put it on straight with the block. So it doesn't look straight, but it should be. And there we go. Voila, as they say. Okay, so now we're going to color our little koalas. Let me put this here because I'll need that again in a minute. We're going to color our koalas. And because I said this is gray granite cardstock, I'm going to use the gray granite blends. Um, because I use my Memento ink, I can, I can uh, color with the, with the blends. You actually can with other inks too. I just wouldn't drag your blends across the ink lines because then it tends to muddy them. But you are going to see, I think there is one where I'm going to use the basic gray today and then it's going to um, work. I'm gonna use the brush side, the broad tip, and I'm going to color my guys. And this only takes a second. It's really pretty quick. The only thing I'm not coloring on here are the ears because that's why I have my petal pink blend here. I've got uh, labels on all of them. I'm going to use for the inside of my ears, I'm going to make sure that I don't color them. So if anybody wants to tell me if I'm coloring wrong, I don't know what a koala is supposed to look like. I'm pretty sure 
Do they have black faces? Can't remember. It doesn't matter. If I colored up with a black uh, marker, I have a feeling that you wouldn't see the cute little button noses that they have. And I heard even though they're cute, they are not necessarily all that nice, but that's only hearsay. Whoa, see that? That was not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna just use my broad tip then for the petal pink. And I'll have to check out what I just did. What I wanna do is use the um, finer tip of the darker one just to follow a little bit just a little bit of the, the lines on the side here. You can do a little bit under the neck. Problem is if you do under the neck, I see there's a little mark on the cheek there. Um, if you do that, you might end up having to use your a little bit around the arms or the paws. They don't have arms. I don't know what I'm talking about. Babbling, you might need to use your um, fine tip, your uh, this is the lighter, just to kind of bring in the lines a little bit, just to make them so that they're a little bit evener. And I probably should have started with the dark first. So anyway, you get the idea. It's gonna be uh, fine when it dries. I'm going to attach this stylish shape circle to the next largest layering circles scallop die say that three times fast and who knows what's coming out with the new annual catalog that's going to be released in may um things may change again but right now circles and squares are kind of my mainstay rectangles too actually and then i love the contour dies who i hope never goes anywhere okay what i'm going to do i think is yeah, I'm gonna move it to the side. Actually, let's do it to this side. Let's keep the ribbon on this side, just for some variation. No, you know why I didn't do it on this side? Because I've got all this open space here. And even a little bit of this knot will carry your um, eyes around that space. If I had it on the other side, I think it would keep your eyes on that side. I'm thinking, I'm not positive. I'm definitely not an art major. I just love to stamp and I love to share with you guys. Okay, so we're gonna put this on here, right in the middle, just like that. And then we've got our thing right here. I will pop it up. You know what I was going to say? I was thinking about popping up this layer here um, with dimensionals. If I was going to do that, then I would not want to necessarily put dimensionals under here. You have to take a choice. You know what? I think I still can. I'm going to put dimensionals right there. Okay, hold that thought. Let's, it was a waste of glue, but I wanted to see how this was going to look doing it this way. So let's put them there. We're going to put one in each corner. And then the other thing I like to do is put it on the ribbon. So I like it in the middle and I don't need to peel it because I've already got my place setter corners already done and ready to go. But so we'll go like that and we're gonna go just like that and we're gonna pop this layer up instead. But then because, like I said, because I popped this layer up as opposed to this one where I popped up the circles, um, you don't want to pop up both of them because it won't go through the mail very easily at all. Um, you don't want your envelope ripped and tattered. And you may be paying a lot of extra postage. And postage, I don't know if you've noticed, but it has really gotten expensive re recently. <sighs> Remember how I said not to pop it up? Well, I was talking and I did but that is way too thick. You're not gonna wanna do that. I'll peel that off layer later and just uh, do it with the glue. But the, there's our first card. So isn't that cute? You'll have to tell me which one you like. Do you like this one popped up or this one laid flat? Either way works. It definitely works. Okay, card number one, done. Isn't that so fun? Okay, let's go to card number two. Now, card number two here, 
I have to keep everything together because like I said, this is my in-person class for Thursday night. So I need to have all of my ducks in a row so I can prep and have everything ready to go. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Okay. I definitely mixed up these two baskets. This one is gonna take a tiny bit longer. This one is an easel card. And I made this last week, you might remember as well. So this is the card, and I'm gonna show you how to make it so easily. Okay, so I've already done my cutting and prepping. What I have here is a five and a half, uh, no, a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock. I scored it at five and a half, and again at two and three quarters. And you're going to score it on the first, um, both on the same side. You don't do a mountain fold and then a valley fold. They're both going to be mountain folds on the inside. I'm going to cut that, uh, not cut that, burnish that edge. And I'm going to do that again with this one. So here we go. This is the part of the fold and we'll do it a little bit more. I might need to burnish that again in the future. Okay, so here I have an early espresso piece of cardstock and I'm pretty sure that this was that this one is four and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Boy, oh boy, where did I put that ruler? So I'm sorry, I keep losing my paper. Okay, let me just do a quick survey and see where I put that ruler because I want to tell you the exact measurements so you can recreate this. Okay, I have no idea where the ruler is. I got rid of it because um, I'll tell you that I have one that has great markings, perfect markings that I can see everything. This one, um, it's a little worn at the end, so I'm only taking a guess at where the mark is. Okay, if I can tell you the one, oh, three and a half by four and three quarters. Three and a half by four and three quarters is this layer. That makes this layer three and three quarters by five. Okay, so there you go. Um, this is Sahara Sand. This is Early Espresso, and we've got our petal pink card base. And when I was over there, I noticed that I didn't bring with me my Early Espresso pad. So that was a lucky, uh, lucky save, lucky find. Um, what I'm going to do is stamp my bear, and I might switch these up a little bit. I might put the bear on a different side instead. I might put him on the right instead, just like that. Straight down, straight up, so you don't get a halo. There you go. And I'm gonna set this aside for a second because we're gonna use this for paper piecing, and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, now we've got our fox, our wiry, cunning fox. But it's okay because the bear is still friends with this fox. There we go. They're having a nice little conversation. And then we're going to stamp the sentiment at the bottom. Love comes in all shapes and sizes. And this was, I'm, I would kept thinking, okay, what am I going to do for the inside of this card? So I'll show you what I did. I used a, another stamp set. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that here real quick before I keep talking because I can't do two things at the same time. There we go. And then I found another stamp set that was gonna work and I thought I had brought it over, but it's probably with my ruler. You know, you know how this goes. Okay, this is Mossy Meadow. This is the grass from the stamp set. Count on me. We're gonna do it a little bit all over here. Just like that. And I'm gonna put my ink away before I get it all over me. Oh, and then I want to do the paper piecing that I was talking about. So this is what I have. I have a strip, I think this is three quarter inches wide, a strip of the designer paper. It's the one that has the mushrooms on the back. I kept trying to get something to make that workable. And I'm telling you, I just couldn't make that paper work. Let me get my sorry, my scrap paper here. And what I'm going to do 
is stamp just the heart. And that's all I need. So you don't have to be crazy about it. You just have to have a decent um, heart stamped. So I can put away that ink for a second. And let me use my handy dandy paper snips and I am going to very quickly just cut around here. I'm gonna cut just inside of the inked lines. Um, you can't do it, if you cut on the outside, then those lines are gonna show on your um, stamped image, so. Sorry, I don't like to use the point, but it really, I have a, I'm gonna have a hard time getting to the center here. Sorry, I'm going off camera. There we go, just like that. Just cut it, move your paper rather than moving your scissors. There we go. Boy, when I'm done with this card, you guys are gonna say, phew, because this is definitely the hardest, most time consuming card, I should say. I'm just going to put a dot of glue right there on my heart, on my bear. Just a tiny bit, a little dabble do ya, as they say. And we're gonna put this here just to add a little bit of color to our bear. We're not coloring him in. It's gonna be essentially a black and white, but. And then the other thing I did, and I'll tell you, I the reason I use these brass uh, butterflies was because one of the ones that I stamped, I ended up with a little something around his nose. And I'm thinking, you know, that would be so cute if there were butterflies around his nose. Um, so, you know. And it does need a little bit of something to fill in this open space here. So we'll just go like that. One more up like that. Okay. I suppose, I don't know if I have more butterflies, so we're only doing two. They say to do three when you're doing things, groups of three. Um, but since I have class on Thursday, I don't want to make sure everybody has butterflies. We're only going to do two. Okay. I'm going to attach this whole piece of paper, this whole layer, to my early espresso layer. So remember I said three and a half by four and three quarters on this layer, and then three and three quarters by five on this layer. It's really pretty close. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is just put adhesive on the bottom. If I put it on the whole thing, it's gonna be fine, but it's not going to open as an easel card. So just put it, add the adhesive on the bottom, just like that. Okay, so there we go. And then all I'm going to do is center it on the front of my card. And because I only added the adhesive to the bottom, it's gonna be fine. Not adorable, but it needs a little bit of something. So I have a half inch strip of designer paper. This is from the same paper pack. This is a half inch by four and a quarter inches. Just to add a little bit of decoration right here. And I have to tell you, this card was inspired by Celine. Celine made a card similar to this, but she made a little square card. So I said, I am going to make it into an easel card. So except for that, if you've seen a card that looks similar to that, I think she also used soft suede. But anyway, that's why. Now, what I should have done was put a white layer in here first, but since I didn't on this one, um, I will probably do like a four inch square um, piece right here of basic white. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this. I'm going to add, and I like the mushroom side this time, so we're gonna do it just like that. A Little bit of adhesive, and I'm gonna add it to the bottom, about a half inch from the bottom. Just like that. And then, if I took my thing here, and I'm pretty sure I did, I had my, um, well, maybe I didn't, but let me show you what I did. Um, because my label is not here. Boy, that's what happens when you're on a Zoom for three hours. Um, time gets away from you when you have to uh, do otherwise and just make do with what you have. So um, I have here on this one, I have, this is from the new sending, no, wait, wait, wait. 
the Sentimental Park bundle. This stamp is from Sentimental Park, and the, this is the Sentimental Park dies, and that's part of the Regency suite. Um, I stamped this, let's celebrate your new baby, because I'm thinking, okay, love comes in all shapes and sizes, which means big and small, which means they could be celebrating a baby. So that's what I decided we're going to do. And what I did was I attached both of these and their photopolymer. I attached both of the stamps to the block and stamped it all at the same time. That's just a little bit hard because you might not be perfectly lined up. Um, but it's also not easy to stamp with two different stamps, one under the other. So you can make your choice, but because it's photopolymer, it's really easy to do. Um, there are so many options in the Sentimental Park, and I will have an online class coming um, soon with that, that I'm pairing, I'm collaborating with Monica Gilberti on that. Um, so anyway, this one, this popped up is an essential um, way to keep this easel card open. So, and if I wanted to, I could, instead of doing pink, I could do blue. I could do a blue heart. I could do some kind of blue designer paper and it would be perfect for a boy. So you can take your choice, but here we go. So, and you can also, like I said, choose that. I think I like this one because they're kind of, except that this one looks like he's saying, no, the heart is mine. And this one, He's sharing it. So who knows? You can you can play with that and stamp them however you want. But that's card number two. And let's move that out of the way. I'm going to keep these cards up here so I can show them once more at the end. And we are going to now move into card number three. This is card number three. Um, card number three... Um, I saw one similar online and I just switched out everything. So we're going to do that really quickly. It's so easy. Um, you've got your four and a quarter by 11 inch thick white cardstock scored at five and a half. Then you've got your four by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white for the top layer. Um, then I have a, this is the back of this designer paper. I decided that this was a nice, subtle pattern, not too busy, not too bright, um, that I could go here. So this would be good for a boy's card, too. I could easily do something like that with this in blue, too. So, But anyway, so here we go again. I cut out the largest, um, not the very largest contour die, the second largest, the very, very largest does the little... Um, scallops which have holes around it all the way and it's actually the size of a full-size card this is the next size down this is two and a half inches by five and a quarter inches it's only the length of my basic white layer not the whole card and I'm going to add that here right to the middle this card didn't take me long at all so it won't take you guys long but you have to have the stamp set to do this um to make these cards so but with your $35 order and using the host code in my store stamping with genie.stampinup.net you get this um, along with the tutorial so just my way of saying thank you to you for that um, this is a oh I've got to measure this because I can't remember two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. That's where that measurement came from. Two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. This is a basic white uh, rectangle that I'm going to attach to the center here, but I'm not going to do it until I finish stamping. Now notice, because my stamps are um, clear, meaning it goes on a clear block, not that they're clear as in photopolymer, it's kind of a misnomer, but these are considered the clear stamps. When you say that you want clear stamps from the catalog, you are going to get the red rubber that attached to the clear blocks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is stamp this in basic gray. And I've got my sentiment for the top. I'm going to do my kangaroo. I really can't remember. There's another name for a kangaroo, and I can't remember what it is, but that's okay. Okay, basic gray. I'm going to stamp my kangaroo. 
at the bottom here just like that i'm not going to rock it because i want to make sure i don't get a halo because i certainly could because these foam pads have a lot of give and when you have give the outline of the stamp the cut outline will pick up the ink so you want to be very careful doing that oh let's stamp the sentiment while i'm at it here no matter what i'm here for you i thought that was just a, a fitting there's so many there's a lot of great sentiments here in the stamp set and I wish that was a little bit darker, but it's okay. You can still read it, so that's good. What I'm going to do is just use a couple of blends, just a couple. I have the light um, Smoky Slate that I'm going to use because Smoky Slate and blue tend to go very well together, I think. And I'm going to avoid his pouch area on the, or her pouch area on the front. I'm going to keep that nice and white. So I'm going to just color the arms just like that. I'm going to avoid the nose and the flower and the ear, the innards of the ear. Can you believe we're almost done with this card class? It's that easy. It really is. I'm going to just color it like that. If I wanted to, I could use the darker smoky slate, but you really don't need to. I gotta get the other side of his paws here. So let's color that just like that. Color that just like that. It's easy to get carried away with the lines and just color like crazy. So you have to kind of pay attention to the, the image. Okay, that's that. Now I'm going to take my flirty flamingo. This is the light flirty flamingo. And I'm going to color the insides of the ears, just like that. And the nose, I may even give them a little bit of a, give her a little bit of the cheeks. Isn't that so cute? Um, if I wanted to get rid of that and I thought it was too bright, I could go over it again with a gray, or I can use my color lifter and I can soften that up a little bit. Now it looks like she's crying pink tears, but anyway, it's okay, it's okay. Um, because my card is blue, I'm going to make my flower blue. Do you know how hard it is? There are flowers, there's like the corn flower. It is, uh, you've got your delphinium. There are flowers out there that are blue. You've got your blue Gerber daisies. I'm not sure if they're naturally blue or not, but um, for the most part, it's much more common to find a pink flower than a blue. And I just noticed that it has a leaf here and on this card, I colored in the leaf as the paw. And this one, I noticed that it's definitely a leaf. So I'm gonna use my So Saffron for the inside. Um, this is the So Saffron Dark. It's a little bit, whatever. And let's go get a Granny Apple Green. light I'm going to use granny apple green and because we don't have a there we go so now you know what's a leaf there we go perfect okay so you need the granny apple green also if you want it to look like a leaf okay let's put this on our balmy blue scalloped layer And thank you to all for who are joining me tonight. As I said, I was on a three hour Zoom this afternoon, which I definitely needed to be on. I'm building a new website. But um, all of a sudden I looked at the time, I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, so what we're going to do is attach this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to attach this ribbon around. This is the variegated blue and white ribbon variegated ribbon what does it say i think it does say balmy blue balmy blue and white yep beautiful ribbon beautiful ribbon and it ties like a dream i love this kind of ribbon oh i forgot when i'm tying bows 
on something, if I don't want the bow to look upside down, I have to tie it upside down. So let me just do that real quick. Let's see if we can do that. There's my ribbon. Okay, I'm gonna tie, cut it with my paper snips. So it's not a ribbon scissor and it doesn't do a great job for me, but that's okay. I should have made it a longer one, but I will give you plenty of ribbon if you buy the class or if you come, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, we're gonna scooch this to the side. And then what I'm going to do is attach this and I could pop it up with dimensionals but I choose to um, just glue it. What I'm going to do is just slide it under the ribbon just like that. Then I can sc scooch my ribbon over if I wanted to or down if I wanted to. There we go. There we go. And then we're gonna just attach it to the front. And then of course, all we, the other thing we need to do is stamp something on our insides. But once again, I am not prepared for the insides. Luckily, I'm prepared for this part. There you go. Isn't that so cute? Just love this ribbon. What do you think? You're gonna love this ribbon. It's part of By the Bay Suite. Um, boy, beautiful, beautiful ribbon. So pretty. Okay. So we got that, and then let's do card number four. Okay, card number four, this is the one, oh, here's the stamp set. Oh my goodness, it was with me all along. Here's the stamp set, Count On Me is the name of it. You've got your bear, you've got your kangaroo, the fox, the koalas, a little penguin, and you've got a little bird. Ah, oh, so adorable. Great sentiments. We can make it through anything if we do it together. I don't think I used that sentiment at all. No matter what I'm here for you, I used. I've got your back. Through thick and thin, count me in. That's what we're going to use on this one. Love comes in all shapes and sizes. We did that on the bear one. And like I said, we can make it through anything if we do it together. That could be this one. You could do it with any of them. Put the bear with or the kangaroo with the fox or the little bird with the bear, whatever you wanted to do. Okay. Let's get to this last card. This is mint macaron. I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I'm gonna do a much better job gluing this vellum on. Mint macaron, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. That's layer one. Layer two, right here. Well, that's our card base. This is layer one. This is the uh, Country Gingham designer paper and I have not used a lot of this. I used a lot of the red and white gingham um, for Valentine's cards, so I didn't use too many of the peach or the green, so I decided that's what we're going to do tonight. I am going to just attach this layer to the base. Nothing to it. Four by five and a quarter. There we go. Now, I have a piece of vellum. This vellum, hmm. I think it's three and three quarter inches by five. Uh, three and a half by four and three quarters. That's what it is. Okay. Vellum, three and a half by four and three quarters. And what I'm primarily going to do is attach behind where my frame, my oval frame is going to go. What I wanted to do, because my um, team member, um, Shirley did a vellum class um, at my last retreat, and she taught me that if I used this thick end with it, it wouldn't leave such a blob. Well, I was in such a hurry that it left a blob, and now my paper is bubbled. So we're just going to do it just like this. What I could do if I wanted to is attach, or just add little, you know, just maybe to the um, corners, just a little dub not in the uh, white right there. Just a little dot and I'm going to be careful and then you know what the reason that works is because in the pattern there's the white dots so if I'm careful about it I don't want to spread it too much just like that then it will not look terrible with my 
when I add my next layer. So what I did here was I cut with, this is part of the framed florets dies. Um, this was a promotion in November or December, and then it still carried through the dies and the designer, the dies and the stamp set carried through, the paper went away um, when it ran out. So there is no more paper, um, just this, the dies yet, but the dies are really fun and easy to use. So what do I have here? What do I have here? If I was doing this right, I would have the stamps all ready to go and there's no stamps in here. Where did I put the stamps? I'm not really always this bad, guys. I'm so sorry. Let's see. The stamp was the penguin. Still on the table where I designed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is stamp my penguin in Memento. I've got my Memento ink right here. get this out of the way. I have to stand up to do this because I want him to kind of be straight. It's this one. It doesn't matter too much because my penguin could totally be floating. In fact, let's do him a little cockeyed because he can totally be floating. What am I thinking? Okay, I'll color that in just a second. And then let me just stamp the sentiment. Um, through thick and thin, count me in. Okay, so this one, I'm looking at this and I'm saying I can't trust the block because that is definitely crooked. But what I want to do is here, stamp it. There we go. Perfect. Doesn't always look like that, guys. Don't think you can't do this because you don't always... Uh, stamp straight and whatever because let me tell you I am the world's sometimes most crooked stamper okay I have the light black blend and I'm going to color much more carefully my penguin so we're going to stay in the lines and we're going to color around his white face and everything oh I'm already out of the lines let's use the other side I'm already doing a, a lousy job. I'm gonna go like this. When you've got lines like this, oh, maybe this penguin is supposed to have an up thing because I've got, again, an up thing. Let's see, just like that. Color around. Just like that. Okay, that's the most time consuming of the whole thing. Then I just have my little beak. This is pumpkin pie. This is the dark pumpkin pie blend. I was thinking you could probably also do it in yellow, but it seems to me that I have seen orange or pumpkin pie flippers on them more than anything else. Okay, I've got my dark mint macaron blend. That's all I've got to do. If I wanted to, I was just thinking about this. Sometimes you can see a little line in the balloon. And if I want to do that, then hmm, I'll just use my color lifter. And soon I think there will be an area that will look a little bit lighter. Um, I popped this one up. I've decided I'm not going to pop this layer up. Um, what I could do actually, if I want to, is instead pop up the frame. Let's pop up the frame this time and you guys can decide which one you like. Um, you're going to need mini dimensionals to pop up your frame. And this is gonna take me a pretty minute. And then I won't pop up the um, inside because then it's easier. What I found was when I popped up the inside, I ended up, it ended up being crooked. And there's nothing worse than a crooked frame. You can see that it's just not right. So instead, let's try to get this down straight. 
just like this. That's pretty close. And then we're going to glue this on the inside. So I'll just add my adhesive. If you don't like glue, you can use your, um, your seal or your seal plus. I think the seal plus is my favorite to use, I have to say. Oh, look at that. I can even wiggle it around to make it just perfect. And then the only other thing I wanted to add, and you can, again, where did I put them? I wanted, I'll have to find them. Um, this would come as par part of your card kit. These are the in-color dots. These are the soft succulent, believe it or not. Soft succulent goes really well with mint macaron. And I'm going to find that all the pieces, all the leftover pieces to my cards are going to be found someplace. So let me see if it's on the table. It is. Here we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm so disorganized tonight, guys. Okay, what I want to do is, normally, I would have, I think I used it for my card over there. I would have my tool with me, but because I don't, I am going to use instead, hmm, well, let's use my tweezers for lack of something better. We're going to use my tweezers here. Hope for the best. There we go. Nope. Flipped on me. I might be better off with my hands in this. What do you think, guys? Let's just use hands. This is how it's not supposed to work on a camera, but that's okay because this is life. Three of them. Look at that. So these are the in color opal rounds. I would suggest you get some of these because these are just so beautiful. And these are going to go out. These are going to go out in, they're going to be very soon, probably in March, since things are a month earlier. These are going to go on the discontinued list and you won't be able to get them anymore. And I just love these. I'm missing the gold because I already used, which are really pale papaya. But So let's just show you this. Let's just show you the cards once more. We've got these two cards. And we've got this card. So cute. And we've got this easel card right here. Oh, let's show you this one that comes with the label. And you can stamp whatever you want inside if you don't have Sentimental Park. There's probably something perfect for it. But thank you for joining me tonight. Let's flip up. Thanks again for joining me. I will see you next week with another class. And next week, I promise I'm going to be much more put together. Have a great night. Happy stamping. Bye, guys.